We've talked about the electron, we've talked about the atom, we've talked about the nucleus and the Rutherford model, but now let's talk about the subatomic particles that are in the nucleus. The subatomic particles that are in the nucleus are called nucleons, and we just need to know that that nucleon is nothing more than just meaning uh, particles found in the nucleus. And there are two particles found in the nucleus, the proton and the neutron. So let's talk about the proton and the neutron today. Proton was discovered by working with canal ray tubes. Uh, they came up with the canal rays. Eugene Goldstein uh, recognized that the canal rays were just the opposite of the cathode rays. There were rays coming from the anode, and that would make sense. There's rays coming from the cathode. Why not rays coming from the anode? And they were able to determine that these were positive. That also made sense. Canal rays would be positive if cathode rays were negative. And you have to remember, the scientists back at that time, and really much the same today, scientists believe that nature is balanced in a lot of ways. And so they figured if there was an electric particle, I mean a negative particle, there needed to be a positive particle also. And so they realized the canal rays were positive. And could this positive charge be a particle? Could there be another particle in the nucleus? So they did some work uh, dealing with that. And they looked at it, the positive charge, and J.J. Thompson was able to determine that there was a charge to mass ratio. Assuming the positive charge to have the same magnitude as the electron, they just said a proton must be plus 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs instead of negative. And they made this assumption and discovered or were able to figure out the mass of the positive charge to be about 1.63 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Now what we realize is that is about 1,836 times larger than the electron and the proton turns out to be about the same size as the hydrogen ion, which is just a proton. So Rutherford suggested that the particle be called a proton and over the years eventually it went from being just call, called a positive particle in the nucleus to be in the proton. Uh, at the same time, electron went from being called the negative corpuscle to be called the electron as George Stoney had suggested. Now let's talk about the atomic number. The atomic number was discovered by Henry Mosley uh, who studied the x-rays of several elements and when he studied the x-rays of these elements he began to notice that there was a constant value to each one of these comparisons of all these elements. And so he did some uh, work discovered that the wavelengths decrease as the atomic masses increase. He discovered the frequency and energy increases, which would make sense because frequency and energy are both directly related to each other. And he also discovered the increase was constant from one element to the next. This meant that more than likely there was some kind of charge or some kind of relation between each element. And he determined that the difference in the elements is determined by the positive charge. The neutron. James Chadwick proved the existence of the neutron many years later. It was until 1932 that we actually proved that the electron existed. Now Rutherford and many of the scientists well before that believed that there had to be another particle in the nucleus to make up for all the mass of the nucleus because the proton didn't uh, account for it all as the neutron had no charge. The mass of the proton could not account for all the mass in the nucleus. There must be another particle. One, it must be neutral. Two, it should be about the mass of a proton. Three, it must be in the nucleus. So they decided that there was a neutral particle. And in 1932, James Chadwick proved the existence of the neutron. Here's the thought that I've got for you. Why did it take so long to find the neutron? Let's wrap up our information about the subatomic particles. The subatomic particle, the electron, first to be found, has a relative charge of 1. Its location is in the atomic space 
and its relative mass is zero AMUs. Now it does have a mass, I realize that, but this mass is so small that in the laboratory and for a lot of things that we're going to do here in the future with our working in equations, uh, chemical equations and things, we can just say that the electron is zero. The proton was the next one to be discovered. We assumed it had a positive charge and today we know that's a fact. It's in the nucleus and it has a relative mass of 1 AMU, which is determined relatively long before we were able to measure the exact uh, masses of the uh, nuclei. The neutron found in 1932 had no charge. Its location was also in the nucleus and it has a relative mass of one uh, atomic mass unit. Again, that's just relative. Its actual is just a little bit larger than the proton. Okay, subatomic particles, you need to know these. You need to get to know this information on this table. It's something that you need to, to memorize and have it down. Uh, you're going to be expected to know it in college and in other classes. If you have any questions, remember, go to mrkazi.com or shoot me off an email to mrkazi at mrkazi.com. Hope you all have happy ions.